What food would you pay not to eat again? My grandma's. She's never cooked with herbs. Salt and pepper were on the table, not added during cooking. Almost everything was boiled. I don't know why. She had cookbooks. She had a garden and when the vegetables were ripe, she brought them to die a slow death in her pot. Mine was just the psych ward fruit cup. My least favorite food when I was at the mental institution was the unseasoned powdered scrambled eggs. How are you supposed to feel better when the food itself is that depressing? Was just thinking of this today, actually. My mum used to bake unseasoned chicken breasts with a slice of American cheese on top. That's it. That's the meal. My dad once served mustard chicken. Chicken breasts left bare save for a single line of yellow mustard down the middle. Then baked until dry. He's gotten pretty good at following recipes and even adapting them a bit for allergies. But on his own, tragic. My mother-in-law's Taco Tuesday. Unseasoned, boiled ground beef, then put in a pasta strainer and washed. To get rid of the grease. Lettuce, tomato, pre-shredded bag of cheese, and that's it. One taco each. I have not been back to dinner there since, which may have been her plan all along. My grandmother-in-law had a sign in her kitchen that said, Spices equal love. So I guess she hated us. My mom's cooking. She overcooked everything, which is why I hated any kind of meat growing up. When it takes 46 chews for a piece of pot roast, it's bad. My parents did the same. I thought my uncle was a genius chef for a brief period when I was 16, and he actually made a juicy steak. Everything my parents made needed to be drowned in ketchup to be remotely edible. They've gotten better recently, thankfully. Ah yes, the old generational differences. Boil it until it's killed without a doubt and all the evil, sinful color has been taken away. That'll make the kids grow up thin and godly. Ramen with hot dogs. Friend's mum used to make it for us when we were there. She threw the sauce packet away and drained all water. It was like eating paste with a cut-up hot dog. That's so weird because for like 50 cents more, you can have mac and cheese and hot dogs, which is a masterpiece of sketchy materials. That's why I think she was soulless. Like, the food. I mean, why deny us the flavor packet? My high school cafeteria served three kinds of cheap pizza that you just microwave, and you knew the difference by the shape. Triangle pizza was a stuffed crust pizza. It was usually good for the crust, but it was a little greasy. Circle pizza was awesome as far as I was concerned. The pepperoni was diced, and I could eat four of those things if they let me. But the square pizza. The square pizza tasted like sadness. Like the crushing reality of our impending adulthood. I recently found a pizza that tastes exactly like it. It costs 84 cents. It tasted like the feeling of a sad apartment with only a milk crate and a pillow for furniture. Boiled, unseasoned rutabaga. Tastes like 16th century serfdom, winter, and desperation. A friend of mine invited my partner and I over for dinner. We knew we were both originally from the South and had been living in the Midwest for many years. I can only assume she googled southern food recipes because she made us chicken and dumplings, which is a food we both enjoy. We sat down to eat and I asked for some pepper. She had to go get some out of her roommate's spice cabinet and brought the salt too, because she didn't want to overseason the food she just didn't put any in while cooking. She ate hers with no seasoning. We asked her later and she just never uses spices or salt when cooking. Wasn't a bad meal, it was a bad situation. I was 20 and stupid. I flew to Denver to meet my internet boyfriend. It was my first relationship and I was so excited. Long story short, I discovered he'd lied about many things and started to question him. And he dumped me. I was alone in a huge city I wasn't familiar with, heartbroken and scared, and hungry. So I went across the street to a family restaurant, only place with food within walking distance, and said, just one. I could tell the hostess felt bad for me. Ordered the most expensive thing on the menu, orange roughy, and my favorite dessert, bread pudding. I just couldn't enjoy it. I cried through it while all the families, and couples, stared at me. Tolerex, the hypoallergenic meal replacement formula that hospitals use for tube feeding patients. I've been getting most of my day's calories from this compost-adjacent slime smoothie for a few months now. I'm not quite ready to hurl it all out the window while screaming, mostly because I don't want to starve. But damn, there are days. Met a beautiful city boy who said he doesn't bring ladies home to meet his parents until it's official. 
spent the summer in the garden, and finally at harvest time, he invited me home to meet his folks at a barbecue. I asked what I could bring, they said veggie sides. I brought some freshly picked corn, peas, and carrots from the garden, hoping I could roast the corn on the grill and maybe maple glaze the carrots, gifting the unshelled peas to his mum. This Britia bee kicked me out of the kitchen to fetch the boys a beer, then boiled the lot of it to within an inch of its life. The batty woman scraped the corn off the cob and served a boiled corn-carrot-pea mash without salt and told everyone it was my contribution. Ouch. Okay, that sounds like actual sabotage. I had an upper GI test where I had to drink a radioactive smoothie which was like fruit-flavored and chalky and thick. I wasn't digesting it fast enough for the test, so they gave me a second one, which they wanted me to drink fast. I was having trouble doing that, and it devolved to the doctor basically chanting, Chug, 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 while I cry-gagged the thing down. My friend's mum would make boiled noodles with watered-down ketchup as the marinara sauce. Even as a kid, I knew there was something seriously wrong with that combo. My grandma's turkey sandwiches. There was nothing wrong with the taste. They tasted fine, if a bit off. Two turkey slices with lettuce, cheese, and ketchup. We'd always eat them when we visited them in Vegas. But we also always kept throwing up, or felt sick the day after, or at the airport. My mum and dad would chalk it up to eating a little bit too much candy, because my mum would always get us some when we departed to keep us busy or to have a snack. But when I threw up by the pool with no candy chunks to speak of, like the rest of the time, my parents started to get a bit suspicious, so they asked her. She had been using expired turkeys. A bit of context. A long time ago, like a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, my dad used to work at a deli, and the deli was holding a sale for turkeys. My dad bought 13 for a joke gift for my grandma on her birthday. Turns out she had been using these turkeys for the sandwiches for over 20 years. And one time at dinner, my dad said she had just run out in 2017. So yeah, no wonder me and my siblings kept throwing up. We even gave the occasion a name. The sick day in Vegas. My sister and her ex-boyfriend invited everyone over to see their apartment they got together. His aunt made some deviled eggs that consisted of relish, jalapeno, and fricking raisins, which she conveniently hid under everything. To add insult to injury, she somehow made them so runny that they practically squirted at you when you bit into one. I grabbed one thinking it was a regular deviled egg, and almost immediately, it made me sick. I've never eaten another deviled egg since then. It's kind of a true running joke that when I make videos for this channel about people's medical conditions, I let people know if any or a lot of the stories are making me gag and causing me difficulty recording. Spoiler alert, most of the medical ones are. Weirdly enough, I would say the awful culinary monstrosities on display in this video are challenging my gag reflex and causing retakes even more regularly. Oh god, those eggs sound like crimes against nature. Truly devil's eggs. A burnt lasagna from Wegmans that a former boss deemed fitting for a company Christmas party. It was made by strangers' hands and served by an emotionally hollow jerk to people he viewed to be as interchangeable as the parts on the machines we were hired to repair. It was the most evil lasagna that I'd ever sunk a fork into. <laughs> Reminds me of the time when my former employer brought us one large pizza and large salad for our shop, about less than 15 grown men, and then invited the other shop to join us too, about another 15 dudes. The most embarrassing thing ever. This was for sending out a project that was overdue, due to management and owner. God, the mental image of 30 dudes standing over one box of sad-looking pizza and some leaves is sending me. A bee flew into my mouth when I was a toddler. The way my mom cooked meat when I was growing up. Take the frozen steak, put it on a cold pan, turn the heat on, wait. No oil or anything. Burnt on the outside, cold and raw on the inside. She was my inspiration to learn to cook. My mother had the exact same approach to cooking, except she deep fried. Everything was deep fried, even pre-packaged food with instructions on how to cook it. My mother's entire focus in cooking was speed. Deep frying was fast, highest heat possible because it cooked faster, as she never wanted to do the work of cooking and hated having to. The irony has not been lost on me that she spent more time actively spending five minutes deep frying than she would have leaving many of these things in the oven for 20 minutes. Of course, this resulted in some absolute disasters that were burnt on the outside yet raw in the middle. 
I didn't know the butter in a garlic Kiev was supposed to melt until I was cooking for myself. Worse though is I've been sick numerous times due to eating food that's simultaneously burnt and raw. Chicken that runs the color scale from black to white to pink was a common occurrence. Growing up, my mother always assumed that I was a fussy eater because I regularly left food or turned my nose in disgust at the abominations she served. Turns out, once I took to cooking for myself, she saw that actually I loved a lot of food when it was actually cooked in an edible manner. My husband's parents boil a lot, but the boiled asparagus they served up at Easter dinner every year just kills me. This potato salad my aunt served once. The taste is almost indescribable. The only thing I can compare it to is the taste of earwax, which I tried out of curiosity at nine years old, don't judge me. It was bitter and saltless, and I didn't even use my fork that night because it had touched the disgusting potato slop. I didn't know potato salad could even be good until about five years later. Cold, plain oatmeal I grew up in a Pennsylvania Dutch area. I love ham, potatoes, and green beans. My mother-in-law tried to make it for me. It was just processed ham cubes, potatoes, and frozen peas brought to boiling. No onion, salt, or pepper, nothing. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. Mac and cheese without the cheese. It's like giving up on life when eating it. I'd used the cheese packet on something else and was hungry and just made the noodles. Last time I made that mistake. I was a broke college student at the time. I couldn't afford any of the additional ingredients everyone has listed to make it better. There was a time that I would take condiments from the cafeteria and put them on crackers, which I stole from the soup station in lieu of actual meals. It's a toss-up between Ina Garten's hummus recipe and a plate of red beans and rice I had at a, quote, Cajun place in Montana. Microwaved poached chicken. My mom would take bone-in chicken breasts and boil them in a glass bowl filled with water in the microwave. This gray meat would then be shredded and used for various recipes. She also nuked scrambled eggs, which made the house smell like a hobo died on a toilet. When I was in seventh grade, a friend invited me to her house. Her very waspy mom served lunch. Tuna sandwiches, my favorite. I took a nice big bite. Reader, they were olive sandwiches. Chopped up cans of black olives mixed with a ton of Miracle Whip. I couldn't figure out what to do with the salty, oily blob in my mouth. Thankfully, my friend went to the kitchen with her mum to get drinks and I spat it out onto a planter. I've never been able to eat olives since then. Was at a relative's house, she dumped chicken legs into a greased 9 by 13 inch pan and covered them with a 28 ounce can of tomatoes. Baked at 350 Fahrenheit for a long time. Chicken cacciatore, she said. No, no salt, nothing. Two ingredients. Had a tightwad friend make dinner one night. It was plain rice with boiled chicken. No spices or flavor. It was plain chicken and plain rice. He didn't even put salt in the chicken water. Creamed chicken on toast. It was my parents' way of saying, we don't really want you kids. Chickpeas. Just rehydrated chickpeas. I was a student and had finals and didn't leave the flat, but I ran out of other food. In the morning, I ate a bowl of them that had soaked overnight, washed up, and then left the dinner chickpeas to soak. This was for a number of days. It was miserable and ruined them for me. Well, we all had our student meal routines, no matter how awful they were. Thinking back on mine makes me feel terrible. Porridge twice a day, with tuna pasta for lunch. I swear that eating bottom-shelf tinned tuna every day for two years must have given me some level of mercury poisoning. It's just unclear how much. Oh well. When I was a freshman in high school, our city would always do a pretty cheap program for the teenagers in town to keep us away from all the vacationing college kids during spring break. We were a pretty popular destination. Free food, drink, carnival rides, games, prizes, and what have you for the whole day. One day I happened to be wandering around the stage area when they called for anyone who hadn't eaten lunch that day yet. I hadn't, so I raised my hand and got called up. It was me and some girl maybe two or three years older, and they pull out a plate for us. Cheeseburger, fried chicken drumstick, bag of flaming hot Cheetos, big red soda, and a brownie. We get ready to dig in when the host says, 
We don't really have time to watch you guys eat all this, so tell you what, let's make this easier for both of you. And they bring out a blender, shove everything inside, and puree everything together. The smell was sickly sweet, like fresh spew, and stuck to the sides of the bottle they served it to us in. The host said they only had one prize for this game, and whoever drank the most of the mixture would win. Being an idiot teenager, I went cheers to the crowd and upended the bottle down my throat. It was like someone took a slushy and ran it through broken glass. It burned the throat as it went down, stuck to the roof of my mouth, and chunks of poorly ground bone got lodged everywhere. It did go down though, and a full minute later I had an empty bottle and a stomach full of satanic diarrhea. And the prize? A t-shirt. The same t-shirt we all got for simply buying a ticket to the program. I threw up about 10 seconds after walking off stage. Hospital Turkey Sandwich Unseasoned pork chops. Literally water if it was a food. Cabbage lasagna. Basically using cabbage instead of the lasagna sheet thingies. That's a shame because at that point they could have just made cabbage rolls and had an actual food that tastes good. A Midwestern church potluck dinner. I didn't know so many different casseroles could all taste the same despite different ingredients and be so bland. My mother-in-law once made a grilled cheese sandwich by placing a slice of cheese between two pieces of bread and then nuking it in the microwave for a full minute. They always do everything one full minute at a time. That's the way us kids could safely make a grilled cheese without using the stove. But we toasted the bread first and then nuked it for about 10 minutes or so. My mom makes constant sarcastic remarks about my cooking. This is the same woman who says boiling pasta in salty water makes it too spicy. Luku. It's a staple in the Congo. You take the root of the manioc plant, soak it in water for a while to remove the cyanide, dry it and then pound it into a flour. To make a meal, you simply mix it with water. It has the consistency and taste of Play-Doh. Cyanide, you say? Yeah, it causes problems when people are really starving and don't want to wait the couple of days until it leaches out. Some eat it raw and there were some deaths due to cyanide poisoning. My mother-in-law brought us a chicken soup soon after I had a kid. She's not a good cook, but had recently learned you can make soup from a rotisserie chicken carcass. It's so easy. You just put it in the pot and add water. Well, there's a little more to it than that if you want it to be a good soup. So we got boiled chicken water made from a few days old carcass. She didn't boil it long enough to be flavorful. There were no seasonings. She didn't put salt in to make it healthy. She put canned green beans in it, which is like one of two foods my husband utterly despises for reasons she should well know. And celery. Bland, celery-flavored, mushy bean and old chicken water. I'd rather she'd tossed me a can of Campbell's. Growing up in England in the 60s and 70s, there's a reason people from all over the world told jokes about the food there. My favorite joke about England is, I can't believe they had the audacity to destroy so many cultures to get spices and then never use any of them. I used to sleep over at one of my friend's houses as a kid, and his mum would make breakfast for us. Same thing every time, scrambled eggs on white bread. Not toast, just cold, straight out of the package white bread. It just tasted weird and soggy and limp with those eggs on there. I was always secretly wondering what the heck the deal was. We were 60 seconds of toasting and a touch of butter away from a perfectly decent breakfast, but their whole family ate them that way, on cold, boring white bread, so I just kind of sucked it up and did it. It was so disappointing. And it's not like they were poor either. They had a fairly huge house in a damn pricey part of Long Island. The dad was a dentist and they were doing fine. Just didn't like toasting things, I guess. Growing up, we had this square Tupperware thing for transporting sandwiches in. I learned if you crack two eggs in that, some salt and pepper and mixed it up and microwaved it, it'd like poof up a bit and cook and make this perfect sandwich-sized egg to put on the white bread. That, plus a slice of cheese and mayo on two slices of white bread, were had quite often. My pop saw me eating one one day and was like, that's gotta be nasty, right? So I offered him a bit. He liked it so much, he had me make him one. And that was my first baby step into becoming the redneck iron chef I am today. Thank you for your service, redneck iron chef. May you make Guy Fieri forever proud. Also, bleh, no thank you. Sincerely, the food snob narrator. A cheese quesadilla that was just a tortilla folded in half with a sprinkling of shredded mozzarella cheese inside, served with a leaf of lettuce and one-third fat sour cream. For dessert was a blueberry bagel with mayonnaise.
That particular college roommate was banned from making dinner ever again. Some more details, as I wasn't expecting all the responses I'm getting. The tortilla was a processed, generic disc of preservative-laden flour, acquired by another roommate from some bottom grocery store shelf with a handful of flavorless craft mozzarella cheese. Literally just folded in half, not heated or anything. There were four of us living in that apartment, and the roommate responsible had never prepared food in her life. Which was understandable, but she kept arguing with the rest of us that she didn't need cooking lessons, and so she was no longer allowed to feed us her culinary concoctions. That mayo on bagel sounds like a hate crime, and I can't stop laughing. Decided to get in better shape. I'm already in okay shape, but I just needed better. Grilled chicken, white rice, and cucumber was my meal of choice, for three months straight, apart from snacks, breakfast, and pasta for lunch. Twice a day. At the end, I could not physically take a bite out of chicken and got myself a greasy burger. My weight-obsessed grandma once gave me, when I was seven to eight, what she said was going to be parmesan chicken, but turned out to be a piece of chicken with a sliver of parmesan about three centimeters across. It wasn't even food, it was a passive-aggressive statement about my weight. It did later turn out she'd also tried to get me and my brother to eat stackers, basically crystal that makes you not hungry, because she thought we were fat, which we weren't. We're both fine now, this was about 10 to 15 years ago, and we're now living a healthy life. That's or the first time I tried to make my own food. I ate pasta. Literally just pasta. Probably a cheap supermarket sausage roll. Tasteless pastry, tasteless sausage with low meat contents. Your thoughts instantly flit to Lunch Lady Doris grinding up gym mats. Weight watches and Slimming World recipes, all based on fricking chopped tomatoes and stock. Who'd have thought seasoning had so many gosh darn calories? Boiled broccoli without any spices. No wonder so many people hate it. You just boil the taste out of it. Add salt at least, it's not that hard. This is coming from someone who likes broccoli. As a kid, I ate grass that tasted better than boiled broccoli. I was a weird kid. To be honest, as I'm writing this, I kinda want to eat some grass right now. I had an ex whose mum made meatloaf with the following ingredients. Ground beef, breadcrumbs. There was no ketchup on top, no seasonings of any kind used. I swear it was like something that I imagined them feeding to prisoners in the hole or something. I lost my McRib virginity recently. Realized it's no different from a frozen rib sandwich from a vending machine. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.